Now in part b, we're asked to draw the graph of y equals 2 cosec 2 theta. And in order to do this, what I'm going to do is base this on the graph of cosec theta. So I'm going to start by looking at the graph then of, let's say, f of theta equaling cosec theta. And then after that, I'm going to consider the graph of f of 2 theta. That means I replace the theta with 2 theta and that's what, what I'm going to get then is a new graph cosec 2 theta. And when I've drawn that graph I'm going to consider the graph of 2 f of 2 theta. In other words to multiply this one by 2 and that will finally give me the graph that I really need which is 2 cosec 2 theta. Alright, so that's how I'm going to break down this problem. So first of all then, we're going to look at the graph of f of theta equals cosec theta, which you should know is 1 over sine theta. Now, sine theta always equals 0 at 0 and 180 and 360. So when you divide 1 by 0, you get an undefined result. And so therefore our graph is going to tend towards an asymptote at 180 degrees, naught degrees as well, and 360 degrees. So we're going to have asymptotes then at these points. Let's just put those in there. Okay? Don't forget that the y-axis theta equals 0 is an asymptote. Okay, now when we have the graph of cosec theta, which we know is 1 over sine theta, sine theta at 90 degrees is 1, so 1 over 1 is going to give me 1. So the graph is going to go through 1 at 90 degrees, and the sine of 270 degrees is negative 1, and so you get 1 over minus 1, which is negative 1. So we're going to have a graph of cosec x going through those points. Let's just plot the cosec x graph for you now. As I say, you should really know this. Okay, so that is f of theta equaling cosec theta. And you've got our minimum point here at 91 and a maximum turning point here at 270, negative 1. Okay, now... We're going to move on and look at the next graph, cosec 2 theta, which is the result of doing f of 2 theta on this graph here. Now, f of 2 theta, we should know what it does is it is a transformation of a stretch, scale factor a half, parallel to the horizontal axis, which in this case is theta. So effectively what that's going to do is halve the size of these, uh, this, this graph here. It's going to squash it up if you like. Okay, So let's see what that would look like. We're going to have the asymptotes at 180 degrees is going to be squashed up now to 90 degrees and the one at 360 degrees is going to be squashed up to 180 degrees. And if we carry that through, we're going to end up with these asymptotes. Then if we squash up the curve that you see here of cosec theta, then what we get is cosec 2 theta, which is going to look like that in purple. So let's get rid of the red graph now, OK? And that's our new graph, f of theta equaling cosec 2 theta. Notice how the turning points, OK, are still at 1 and at negative 1. Now we move on to the final graph, which is now 
2 cosec 2 theta, which is obtained by multiplying the f of 2 theta, that was the cosec 2 theta graph that you see in front of, it, of you now, by 2. And what effect does this have? We should know that multiplying by 2 stretches the graph that you've got by a scale factor of 2 parallel to the y-axis. So in other words, it's going to stretch this out and this turning point here that is at 1 is now going to be pulled out. It's going to be doubled, so it's going to now bottom out, if you like, at 2. Okay, And this one here, down at minus 1, is now going to be pulled down to minus 2. So if we draw that in, okay, the graph of cosec 2 theta now becomes this graph in red. Let's just remove the purple graph and that leaves us then with y equals 2 cosec 2 theta. OK, so I hope you've understood that and we'll move on now to part C.